Today on MTG Unpacked, we're going to go through what a draft is, a booster draft, and what is involved. So if you've never been to one of these events before, I'm going to assume you uh, just have a basic understanding of how magic works, or you've been playing a while, but you might not have ever participated in a draft. So, what is a draft? It is not a pre-release, but I have this box here for uh, illustration. So you've got your arrivals of Ixalan. It's going to be sort of similar to a pre-release event where you have, um, you've got to build your deck from sealed packs and you're restricted to whatever you find in the packs. So typically you're going to have uh, eight players in the event. You're going to be sitting around a table and each person will get three packs each. You could also have four or twelve players. It really depends on um, how many people you have there and the organization of your shop or your home or whatever. So the goal is to construct a 40 card deck uh, the entry cost is typically going to be like 10 or 12 dollars so whatever the cost of the packs is I don't actually have any here um, but I do have the cards that I opened from Rivals in the Planeswalker videos I did the other day so if you go back and check those out you'll see I open these in the exact same sequence here so this will be a good example for what you're likely to see when you open your packs so, when you um, open your first pack, you're going to have your usual arrangement of cards. So you'll have, you know, 10 commons, 10 commons, and then you look at the symbol there, you have your three uncommons, and then a rare or a mythic, and then you'll get usually a a land or a checklist like this and a token. Sometimes you'll get a foil at the back. Um, so the general process is you want to set aside your token and like something like this you'd want to set aside. Um, so you have an ad or a land or whatever. And then you want to go through what you've pulled. So just reading through the cards, you don't have a lot of time so it's usually going to be just skimming these things and you might have in mind what color you're going for beforehand or what tribe. So you've got vampires, dinosaurs, merfolk and who is the other one? I always forget. Um, pirates. So you've got all those different tribes um, you go through here, you, you want to really pick the best card you can each time through. That's not always going to be the rare. It really depends at which, which stage you're in. Um, I'll go through that in a little more detail in a moment. Once you've picked your card, you want to, let's say you picked this one, for argument's sake, put it face down, and then you pass the pack to your left. So you'll usually hold it upside down, put it to your left, and then the player to your left will then pick up the cards and they'll start going through and they'll pick a card. So this will continue, you know, around the table until everybody has gone through all the packs. And so the first pack for everybody is pretty much exhausted. And then once that's done, you're going to go for your second pack and then you'll go through it, you'll set aside your, oh, spoiler, set aside your um, tokens and lands and so forth and then you'll go through and see what you have. And then the difference, so the second pass through, you'll be passing to your right, so You'll again put it face down. This is probably a bad example. In something like this, people can see what it is, so you might want to just conceal that, keep it concealed with the checklist. 
and then that player will grab the cards, they'll go through, pick their one best card for whatever they're trying to do, and then that'll continue. Then the last pack, same sort of thing, set aside your token and your land, and you might want to, before you do that, you might want to check is there a double faced card there because you have that same problem we had a moment ago. Pick your card and then pass to the left, again face down. So that is pretty much the main drafting process and we'll get into a bit more detail here in a moment. So this one, I think I had that there. So pretend these packs are sealed. So once you're done with this whole thing, then you'll want to go off somewhere and start building your deck. So what will you have in your deck? You'll generally want to have like 17 lands, 23 spells, and you want to make sure you have plenty of creatures. So about 17 is about the number you want to aim for. You also have roughly six other spells. And these numbers are going to vary depending on what you're trying to do. You don't really want to drift from that too much and you really want to stick to the 40 cards to make sure you get the draw of what you've got there. Because if you have too many cards then the things that you picked, the heavy hitters or the uh, useful cards are going to be less likely to come up. So the main thing to remember, make sure you have enough creatures. Um, light pre-release in this format Flyers are a big thing, so if you can get a flying creature, that will usually have an advantage over your opponent. Uh, removal, as well, is another thing to pay attention to. And then when you are uh, building your deck, you want to look at the proportion of cards you have, like which colours you have. So generally, you're going to aim for two colours. Um, it's going to be pretty difficult to do a single monocolor deck. So, yeah, generally aiming for two colors. Sometimes you might want to splash in a third there if you have a card or two that needs it. That will be helpful. Um, so then we'll go back. So that's that's pretty much the the gist of the overall thing. And then you want to look at. Okay, so you've got all these cards. How on earth do you pick something? So that's where this BREAD acronym comes in, if you've heard that before. Uh, that's something to keep in mind. So you want to look for bombs, which are the big game-winning cards that can turn the tide and get you a win or pull you out of a really sticky situation. Then you have removal, that is um, removing other creatures, getting them off the board, uh, countering spells, that sort of thing. The next initial you have is evasion. So like I said earlier, flyers are really good. They can evade being hit. Um, also creatures that are uh, good at blocking or cannot be blocked. Then you want to look for aggro. So you want to have beefy creatures that can do a lot of damage. And finally is the Drek. It's all the leftovers. Some people call it dirt or whatever else. That's the stuff that really doesn't fit in with what you're trying to do with your deck. And you're not really interested in it. And you might find those particular cards just keep going round and round the circle. And you end up with whatever's left. So, like I said, <coughs> excuse me, like I said earlier... You might have in mind a tribe, or you might have in mind a colour, or a couple of colours. Um, one other thing you want to do, you want to check out what cards are available in the set beforehand. Um, just do a little bit of quick study, like what are the big cards to look for, what are the useful cards, read some articles so you're not totally unprepared. And then when you come into the draft, it's going to feel a little frantic, but, you know, do the best you can. So let's go through a few examples here. So generally you want to skip through things quickly. So we've got a red, white, blue, green, black, 
okay so then we've got a red and you're just looking at okay what are these cards what do they do um, oftentimes you want to skip through to the just the uncommons and the rares because that's usually where you're going to find your bombs so let's take a look here in this one we have awakened amalgam so this is an artifact creature golem his power and toughness are each equal to the number of differently named lands you control so this one i don't think it's necessarily going to be that useful in draft because you're not going to unless you're lucky and you draw some dual lands you're not going to have that many lands that are named differently so i would probably pass on this one baffling end when a creature enters the battlefield exile target creature and opponent controls with converted mana cost three or less so that is a bit of removal there when baffling end leaves the battlefield target opponent creates a three three green dinosaur creature token with trample so this will exile uh, a target creature your opponent controls but then when this guy leaves, if they get rid of this enchantment, then they get a creature token. So it's plus and minus to that one. Then if we look at Dead Eye Brawler, this one has Death Touch, which is pretty good. Um, has Ascend. If you control 10 or more permanents, you get the City's Blessing for the rest of the game. So the City's Blessing can be very useful in this set. Uh, you'll see a bunch of cards have this ability. So in this case, when you have the City's Blessing, this says whenever Dead Eye Brawler deals combat damage to a player, if you have the City's Blessing, draw a card. So you get some card draw here, you get a Death Touch, you get a 2-4. He's a black and blue. So depending on what colours you're drawing, that could be useful for you. He's also a pirate, so if you're going for a pirate thing, this one... I like you can at the can see you can add mana of any color to your mana pool so this is useful for mana fixing you can sacrifice it and return a target dinosaur card from your graveyard to your hand so if you're doing a dinosaur strategy you're doing that sort of tribal thing this could be a useful card there so let's say I pick that one um, I don't know if there's many other options here but as time goes on you're going to see you're not always going to go for the rares or the uncommons you're gonna want to look at some of these uh, common cards as well so there's another thing to keep in mind is when you're building so obviously keep in mind the bread acronym you also want to look at a variety of mana costs because you want to have a decent variety of cards for your mana curve so you don't want all like three and mountains for instance so that would be a four drop you don't want tons of those you want to generally have a bunch of smaller ones so probably the most of like two drops or three drops um, here's a one drop so that would be good first play you can put that out right away um, that's a sorcery though so I don't know if that's going to be that useful um, but yeah, just try to build up so you want to have a few single drop cards gradually building. You can imagine the curve and then as you get to the higher cost cards, you're going to have maybe only one of those or none, depending on what you're trying to do. Um, so that's, that's a general strategy there. Um, there's a couple of other things to keep in mind. So try to be aware of the different mechanics in the set. In this one we still have Enrage, Explore and Raid. So if you're familiar with those mechanics, those are carrying across to Rivals of Ixalan. If you're not familiar, you might want to read up on those. Uh, also, this is what I mentioned earlier, I think the only new uh, mechanic in this set is Ascend which was the, the one where you get the city's blessing if you have 10 or more permanents. Um, from the pre-release, we found that people um, thought it would be more difficult than it actually was to get Ascend. 
So that's going to be useful. If you see any cards with a send, uh, you might want to pick those up um, in your draft. Okay, so we've gone through our first pack. Obviously our pick is face down. We don't want everybody to see it. And then you want to go to your next pack. So this stuff, this was part of this, so yeah, that's face down. Okay, so we've gone all the way through these cards now. Everybody's handed them out. We go to the next pack. So put aside your uh, token and so forth. Quickly go through here. You're looking for bombs. You're looking for removal, evasion. And depending on how many cards of each type you've already picked, how many colors, um, you, you don't necessarily have to remember them. Like you can look at what you've already um, set aside, but just keep in mind you're a bit time limited. <clears throat> so here's, here's one you might pick. You might say, oh, Forsaken Sanctuary, I'm playing white-black. This will be handy so I can choose either white or black, but the downside is this enters the battlefield tapped. Um, so depending on where you are, how many cards have gone along, that may or may not be useful. Here's another one we talked about. Ascend ability. Creatures you control get plus one, plus one until end of turn. If you have the city's blessing, those creatures get plus two, plus two until end of turn instead. So this is a good one for just quickly pumping your creatures up. Most useful if you have the city's blessing. So that's a, a pretty good one. Uh, Golden Demise, this is a, a piece of removal. All creatures get minus two, minus two until end of turn. If you have the city's blessing, instead only creatures your opponents control get minus two, minus two. So in the first case, you want to make sure you have some beefy um, dinos or something out on the field. So this would be getting rid of the opponent's tokens or smaller creatures. And then, if you have the city's blessing, that's even better because then you get to keep your creatures but um, reduce the power and toughness of the opponent. So then you're, you're going through here. Um, you're not going to obviously put these face down so everybody can see them, but you're carefully concealing them. Oh, then you go, okay, we've got a checklist. Now you know what this means. This means you're going to get a flip card, in this case Profane Procession. This is one of the better cards. You pay three, a Plains and a Swamp. You can exile target creature, then if there are three or more cards exiled with Profane Procession, transform it. And what do we get? Oh, we get a Legendary Land, Tomb of the Dusk Rose. So the reason why this is so powerful when it's transformed, you can add one mana of any color to your mana pool if you tap it. Or you can pay to a plains and a swamp, tap it, and you can put a creature card that is exiled with this permanent. So when you exiled something this first time through, you can then put it back on the battlefield under your control. So the idea being there that you would exile your opponent's creatures or, or one creature depends how long you can keep this out there for before they remove it and then if you can flip it then you actually gain control of those creatures when you um, pay the mana cost so this would be definitely my pick if I was in um, white or black if I wasn't I might be kicking myself or I might decide well we've only pulled a few cards, I changed my mind, I'm going to go this route, so that would be an option. So what I'm going to do, and being careful here, if you're putting it face down, make sure you take the checklist card, so people can't see it. Um, that's usually what you'll do if you're playing unsleeved, you'll just have this in your deck, because you can't very well shuffle this thing in, because then it's very obvious what card is there. If, imagine it's on the top, so you want to hide that. Alright, so let's say, yep, we're done with that. So second pack, 
pass to the right and I had a lot of trouble with that um, often I keep passing the left or passing the other way don't worry about it just try to pay attention um, if things get messed up it could get a little messy so yeah really have to be focused on which way you're passing and uh, generally people will correct you if they see you've done it wrong okay so we're on to our final pack we've got some good picks so far uh, we've got a goblin so if we're let's say we're running low we don't have too many low mana cost creatures we might want to pick him if we're in red um, moment of triumph there's a, a one drop Target creature gets plus two, plus two, and two end of turn, you gain two life. That could be good for pumping your creatures. Feathern Fleet Border, he was pretty good in pre release. So, going through, Gleaming Barrier, Artifact Creature. We've got a Vampire with Flying, there we go, so that could be a good pick if you're in white. Another white, blue, counter target creature spell, that could be good. Enrage, if you're in a dinosaur theme. Golden Demise, so we talked about that. And here we have Rekindling Phoenix. So this is the point where you, you try to keep a poker face because this is probably the best card in the set at the time of this video. So Rekindling Phoenix, you can see by the symbol that's a mythic has flying when rekindling phoenix dies create a zero one red elemental creature token with at the beginning of your upkeep sacrifice this creature and return target card named rekindling phoenix from your graveyard to the battlefield it gains haste until end of turn so this is a four three for four mana seems pretty decent and the the best part is if it dies you can get it back again so you, uh, yeah, this guy can keep rising from the ashes. So if you pull this, if it's early on, you haven't decided yet, you're thinking, oh, red, I've got a few good red cards already, I might go for red, um, you would probably want to pick this. So that would be my, my next pick. And then this final pack, passing to the left, and then that continues around until we're done. Now couple of things that are not going to be obvious um, things called like uh, forcing the color if you are determined you want to be in red for instance then you'll always pick red cards that could be your downfall though because if you're only picking red and somebody else has picked red what you're going to find is there might be slim pickings when the, the reds come around so that's where the, this idea of signaling comes from. So if you get a pack from your left or your right and you go through it and you're like, oh, where are all the blue cards or where are all the red cards? The chances are somebody around the table has picked those and they're trying to signal whether on purpose or inadvertently that that's the color they're choosing. So then you might want to say, okay, well, I'll go in uh, white black and then you're more likely to get uh, better picks as you go through but this is all it's all very subjective which cards you pick um, this whole idea of signaling doesn't always work somebody could be tricking you by just grabbing something or they might not have much choice and grab something that they don't really care about so yeah that's the the main process uh, what else here? So the mana costs and curve, you want to pay attention as you're picking cards. Make sure you have a, a variety of costs so you can start playing from the very first turn. And finally, so this is this video is mainly centered around Rivals of Ixalan, but the process continues um, in much the same fashion for any set. So... Um, the three pack idea and the passing left, passing right, signaling, picking the colors, the mana curves, number of creatures, all of that. Um, but the difference is you're going to have different mechanics, you're going to have different types of cards that you may not have studied, 
it really depends what your local game store is doing, um, what event they're holding. One thing you might have heard of, which, let's see if I can dig this up, you might have heard of Chaos Drafting, so that's what these things are about. Um, a whole lot of different packs from different sets, and as you can imagine, that will lead to chaos. So you're going to have all different uh, sets from different blocks, different mechanics. Um, it's going to be just pretty crazy and probably confusing at various points. So, yeah, I, I haven't actually participated in a chaos draft, but I imagine it'd be a lot of fun. So, okay, you've, you've built your 40 card deck. What else do you need? Make sure you have your dice. Um, make sure you bring, you can either bring a bunch of uh, basic lands with you for when you're building your deck because you won't get them out of the packs. Or usually your local game store will have a whole heap of them that you can borrow for your deck. Um, make sure you have a means of life canning. Um, you might want to leave the planeswalkers at home because they get in the way and they just fall over. Um, maybe a playmat if you're so inclined and that's pretty much it. So draft is one of the more unique um, experiences in Magic after the pre-release. Um, I'm not sure which I prefer more. I think draft can be more interesting because with pre-release you get your six packs here and you're limited to what's in the box whereas you've got a much wider pool of cards with eight people so what is that 24 packs worth so you're potentially um, getting a lot more interesting um, strategies different variety of cards different colors so yeah that's pretty much draft 101 in a nutshell uh, if there's anything I've missed, anything about strategies or tips, uh, leave a note in the comments. I think the newer players will be uh, very uh, thankful for that. Yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Hit the subscribe button for more Magic the Gathering unboxings. Um, I'll probably be showing what I picked for my draft, what deck I built. Uh, after the event so that ought to be interesting and I'll try to do a little bit of a deck tech on that why I picked what I did and uh, what I ended up with so I hope you'll all participate in a draft at some point uh, even if you don't get a chance to this weekend and as always have a great day